given that the rectangle has a length x and perimeter 8, write down the area of the rectangle in terms of x. So here's our rectangle. We know that the length is x, so this other length must also be x. And we know that the perimeter, so if we add up the four sides, we get 8 units. So we want to come up with the area of the rectangle in terms of x. So in terms of x just means x is in our answer. So we know area is length times width. So we're going to let y equal the width of the rectangle as in the diagram. So this is x, this is also x, we're going to call this y and this y. We know the perimeter is equal to 8 units, so we're going to have x plus y plus x plus y equals 8. So x plus y plus x plus y equals 8. So that gives us 2x plus 2y is equal to 8. And dividing across by 2, just to simplify, we get x plus y is equal to 4. And solving for y, getting y on its own, we bring the x over the equal sign, it becomes minus x. So y is equal to 4 minus x. Now we know that the area of a rectangle is length multiplied by width. We know that the length is x and the width is y, so the area is going to be x multiplied by y. And we just stated that y was 4 minus x. So we swap the y for 4 minus x with brackets. And then we multiply out the brackets. x times 4 is 4x, x times minus x is minus x squared. So when you're doing this question, it doesn't matter what you call y. So what you call the width, you can call the width... Uh, a, B, C, Z, doesn't matter. Any letter will do, so long as it's not X, because we know that the length is already X. And no matter what letter you do call it, you will still end up with 4X minus X squared. If M is equal to Y2 minus Y1 divided by X2 minus X1, express Y2 in terms of the other variables, in terms of the other letters. Note, whatever letter comes after the word express, is to be on its own. So we want to get y2 on its own because y2 comes after the word express. So hopefully you recognize this formula. This is the formula for the slope of a line in coordinate geometry. So we have m equals y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So the first thing we want to do is get rid of the fraction. So the y1 is what we're, the y2 is what we're looking for, this value here. So I'm actually going to highlight that so it stands out. So that's what we're trying to get on its own. So it's tied up inside a fraction, so we want to get rid of the fraction first. So we're going to multiply by x2 minus x1 so that we break up the fraction. So we're going to multiply both sides by x2 minus x1, because what we do to the left, we do to the right, we do to the right, we do to the left. And really you're multiplying by x2 minus x1 over 1. So this will cancel with this, and we're left with y2 minus y1 on the right. And we have m times x2 minus x1 on the left. So another way of looking at it is that we bring this denominator under the equal sign, and we stick it onto the m. So we multiply both sides by x2 minus x1. So again, we're trying to get the y2 on its own, so I'm going to highlight the y2 there again. And now the only thing we have to do is bring this minus y1 over the equal sign, and it becomes positive y1. Or we could say you add y1 to both sides. So now we have the y2 on its own. So we have y2 is equal to m, times x2 minus x1 plus y1. If v equals u plus at, express t in terms of the other variables. So we need to get the t on its own. So we have v equals u plus at. We're going to start by bringing the u over the equal sign, it becomes minus u. So we have v minus u equals at. Or you could say we subtract u from both sides. And then we need to get the t in its own. So the a is stuck onto the t, which means multiply. The opposite is divide. So we divide both sides by a. So we have v minus u over a is equal to t. So now we have t on its own. If 1 over b 
plus 1 over a is equal to 1 over c, express c in terms of a and b. So I'm going to highlight the c. So that's what we're trying to get on its own. So I'm going to highlight it each step of the way so that we can see what's happening. So we have 1 over b plus 1 over a is equal to 1 over c. If we take all the denominators, b, a, and c, and stick them together, we get a common denominator of a, b, c. So if we multiply each term by a, b, c, we will remove the fractions. So 1 over b multiplied by a, b, c over 1. We're going to do top by top, bottom by bottom. We get a, b, c over b. The b's will cancel, leaving us with a, c. So that's how 1 over b becomes a, c. Then we're going to do 1 over a, again, multiplied by a, b, c over 1. Top by top, bottom by bottom, we get a, b, c over a. The a's will cancel, leaving us with b, c. So that's how 1 over a becomes b, c. And then we're going to do 1 over c, again, multiplied by a, b, c. So top by top, bottom by bottom, we get a, b, c over c. The c's will cancel, leaving us with a, b. So that's how 1 over c became a, b. So we multiplied each term by a, b, c to remove the fractions. Next, we're going to take out the common factor c on the left-hand side. So we're going to factorise the left, and we take c as the hcf, so we get c times a plus b, and that's equal to ab. And then the last step is to divide both sides by a plus b. So we end up with c equals ab over a plus b. So another way of doing the question on the previous slide is to change the left hand side of the equal sign, so 1 over b plus 1 over a, into a single fraction. So we start by getting a common denominator, so we stick the b and the a together to get a common denominator. b divides into b a, leaving us with a, the b's cancel, leaving us with a, and a times 1 is just going to be a times 1, which will end up giving us a. And then a into b a, the a's will cancel, leaving us with b, and b times 1 will be just b times 1, which gives us b. So we have a plus b over ba is equal to 1 over c. Next we're going to cross multiply. a plus b times c, so it's going to be a times c, which is ca or ac, b times c, which will be cb or bc, equals ba times 1, which is just ba. And the rest is the same as the previous question. So we factorise the left hand side, and then we divide both sides by a plus b. If the cube root of 3p minus 2 over 2p plus 1 is equal to q, express p in terms of q. So basically, make p the subject of the formula. So we have the cube root of 3p minus 2 over 2p plus 1 is equal to q. The first thing we're going to do is replace the cube root with the power of a third, because that just means the same thing. So the cube root gets replaced with the power of a third. So we have 3p minus 2 over 2p plus 1 to the power of a third, and this is still equal to q. Now, we are trying to break up the fraction. We don't want to have a fraction anymore. So what we first of all need to do is get rid of the power of, of a third. And the way to do that is to make it become 1. So how do we make a third become 1? Well, we multiply by 3. So we're going to multiply the left of the equal sign by 3. Well, we're really raising it to the power of 3. And then we do the same to the right, because what we do to the left, we do to the right, we do to the right, we do to the left. So Q, so Q will be raised to the power of 3 as well. So a third raised to the power of 3 is the rule is we're going to multiply because when we're raising a power to a higher power we multiply the powers so a third times three is the same thing as a third times three over one top by top bottom by bottom we get three over three which is one so that's how we actually get rid of this all together so a third times three is one so this ends up being to the power of one so another way of looking at it is saying that we're going to bring the power of a third over the equal sign and it will become to the power of 3. Anyway, we still have what's inside the brackets, 3p minus 2 over 2p plus 1, and that's now equal to q to the power of 3.
So this is just showing where that came from. So x to the power of third raised to the power of three is the same thing as x to the power of third times three, which is x to the power of one, which is just x. So that's just showing you again how we got rid of this. So what we did was we cubed both sides. Okay, so now we still have this fraction we need to break up. So we're going to divide both sides by 2p minus plus 1. So you could just say that this comes over the equal sign and gets stuck onto the q cubed. So we have 3p minus 2 equals 2p plus 1 times q cubed. So next we remove the brackets or just multiply out the brackets. 2p times q cubed is 2p cubed. 1 times q cubed is q cubed. Next, we put all the terms with a p on the left-hand side. So 3p is already on the left. You just bring it down. Then 2p q cubed comes over and becomes minus 2p q cubed. The q to the power of 3 stays where it is. And the minus 2 comes over and becomes positive 2. Now we factorize the left-hand side. So taking out the p is the highest common factor because that's what we're trying to isolate. So p into 3p leaves us with 3 p into minus 2pq cubed leaves us with minus 2q cubed. And again, that's equal to q cubed plus 2. And then we divide both sides by 3 minus 2q cubed, giving us p equals q cubed plus 2 all over 3 minus 2q cubed. So now we have p on its own. So what we did was we replaced the cube root with the power of 1 over 3, so the power of a third. We then cubed both sides. Then we multiplied both sides by 2p plus 1. We've removed the brackets, multiplied out the brackets, put the terms of p on the left-hand side, took out the highest, the common factor p on the left-hand side, so we factorised the left, and then we divided both sides by 3 minus 2q cubed. And we got p on its own, so p is now the subject.